Welcome back friends. We are talking about uh, the biological organism, model organism C. elegans which is a type of nematode or you can say type of worm. Now in this video we will be talking about the genetics and uh, the genetic makeup of C. elegans. Okay, And also we will be talking about the interesting fact uh, that why we have chosen this C. elegans over other organisms that I have already told you that in first video that the C. elegans are utilized to study the expression of different gene in, in the different time of developmental stages because their lifespan is so small uh, almost like 2.5 days to 6 days lifespan and we can study the, each of the developmental stages pretty fairly as well as we can study the expression of different genes and how the different gene expressions are uh, involved with each other so we can study all these things using the C. elegans ok so now in this video we will be talking about a little bit about the genetics of C. elegans. Now first of all what I need to tell you about the C. elegans is their chromosome is really really uh, they are having five pairs of autosome uh, one pair of sex chromosome. So the chromosomal makeup so let me write it here chromosomal makeup is something like that it is having five pairs of autosome so it is having five A's five pairs of autosome plus it could be one x uh, one pair of sex chromosome which, which can be x and x x uh, is telling us a 10 which is a roman number right so it is a type or it can be another type of organism like five pairs of autosome plus one x and instead of another x there is nothing so one x and one o we put it so they can be two different type of makeup can be found this type of makeup or the organisms or those uh, C. elegans having this type of genetic makeup that means five pairs of autosome and one pair of sex chromosome that means one pair of X6 they are called as hermaphrodite we all know that we have seen this name they are called as hermaphrodite hermaphrodite body now this hermaphrodite type of C. elegans can uh, self fertilize that means they can they can produce their own sperm and as well as they can produce their own eggs so they can self fertilize but except for this hermaphrodite type of uh, C. elegans rest of them which are having one X only uh, another X is absent they cannot self fertilize they, they can be treated as simply they can be treated as male they are treated as male so can use them in different genetic recombination studies okay so this is the makeup of chromosomes now as they are having only five pairs of autosomes so it is pretty easy to study all these chromosomes and when you need to study genetics when you need to study the genome we need to sequence the whole genome right and the whole genome sequencing the genome is sequenced and this C. elegans is the first organism which uh, genome is completely sequenced which is the first type organism so this is uh, in, in whole uh, now we are having the sequence of human being and also other organisms but C. elegans was the first one to undergo the whole genome sequencing project and whole genome sequence is totally completely sequenced in 1998 in fact uh, at the 1998 some little bit of work left which was completely done in 2004 so you are having the complete sequence which is complete confident sequence of C. elegans at 2000, uh, in 2004 okay so whole genome is sequenced now the genome sequencing that was done of C. elegans is utilizing shotgun method of sequencing it is called hierarchical shotgun sequencing now what we mean by hierarchical shotgun sequencing it is a step by step approach so it's a cloning and the cloning of cloning approach to get the result so that means I'm telling you is gist of it because I am having a video of hierarchical shotgun uh, shotgun cloning in my youtube channel so you can go there and I uh, it's my recommendation to must visit that particular part and understand what is hierarchical shotgun cloning you will be having a better idea by looking at the video but in this video I am telling you it's very basic that what we get is a total genome now this genome is fragmentized randomly using restriction enzymes that's why it's called the shotgun so small fragments are cloned the small flag fragments are cloned in different vectors now the vectors we have utilized in all these cases are 
bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome now in this case what we use we are using this eukaryotic system so that's why we choose yeast artificial chromosome over bacterial artificial chromosome because both of them back and yaks are having higher capability of holding the insert because the genome that we are getting the fragments we are getting are large enough that's why we must use yeast artificial chromosome because it is having both the ability to hold large insert as well as it is having everything to be expressed inside the eukaryotic system so we we uh, make the clone of these fragments then what we'll take we again take this small small fragments we again uh, fragmentize them so again small fragments are made then you can reclone these fragments into some other type of into some again smaller plasmids again so it could be not plasmids actually you can utilize cosmid we can utilize again another type of yak so again sub clone all of them so finally we get the small part small enough like 1 to 2 uh, kb like small very small clone then what we can do we can sequence them using sanger sequencing and automated sequencing and we get the results now once we get the sequence results what we need to align all these results suppose this is the results we need to align them together so that we can find the overlapping regions like this so once we get the overlapping regions we can make this whole sequence out of it so that's the basic idea fragmentize the whole genome clone it then subclone it and subclone it till that point once we get a very small fragment to be sequenced now once we get the small fragment to be sequenced we sequence that fragment get the sequencing result then we want to find the overlapping regions between the sequencing result and once we get it we make the alignment and we get the total sequence so that's how we get the sequence it is called the hierarchical shotgun cloning there are other mode of shotgun cloning like whole genome short shotgun cloning uh, whole genome shotgun sequencing not cloning actually sorry so you can uh, please make the uh, look at the videos that you can find in my youtube channel anyways now that's the process of getting the sequence now once we get the sequence what it is telling us is the total genome size so the genome size is 100.4 mb so this is the size of the genome it's not that much big it's not even uh, too much so it's a it's a 100.4 mb genome for an eukaryotic system it is not that good but for bacterial system it is way above so it's a it's 100.4 mb genome and obviously in this genome they are having a 44 percent which is important 44 percent at rich sequence so, so that means it is telling us the rest of the part is gc so the gc part will be here uh, 56 percent of gc so high gc content so gc content is higher than at content so we get this idea from it so this is also telling us that as they are having higher gc content so they can survive more in the high temperatures good uh, or better right because as we are having lower gc content they, the, those high gc content means the dna strands are having g and c binding together which are having three hydrogen bonds so it is more difficult to separate those strands out if you are having high gc bonds than the at bonds okay so this is the genetic makeup that we get and what we get that among these portions most of the part is uh, coding but there are also introns introns that are non-coding and this non-coding regions are repeatedly found in several regions in the gene of C. elegans that's another important concept okay now what we want to uh, what, what is our actual interest is to look for the expression so how to look for the expression study the way to look for the expression study nowadays is using uh, what what we use it's a very simple process we are using microarray and microarray can tell us the expression of different genes in different time limits so you take the sample in different time limit of development and we look for the expression of the genes using microarray analysis because we can have the whole genome of it we make the genome library and we just put uh, our uh, fragments or probes to look for the radiation now how uh, we get the expression using microarray if you want to learn that you can please visit my youtube channel again and you can find the microarray video it's an animated video uh, so I hope you'll enjoy this video so just go through that video it will help you to understand how to get the expression uh, from a gene using microarray okay so we get the expression studies the microarray but the important thing I want to tell you is that the disruption study or the most important study that we can carry out using C. elegans is the loss of function study so I mean right here loss of function loss, loss of function study now what we mean by loss of function study as we are looking at different stages of development we want to find that which part of the gene is functioning 
which region is functioning, which region is not at a particular time point. How to prove that that this gene is expressing right now? This gene is expressing. Uh, this gene will express sometime later. The way, the easiest way to find that out is that uh, how to find out the function of a gene. Now we have seen the expression of a gene, but how to find the function of a gene? Making or finding a function of a gene is a tedious task, and we can find it using loss of function studies. Now what we mean by loss of function to study and know the function of a gene. Suppose this gene is coding a protein. So it is suppose it's a gene. Gene A. It is coding a protein. The protein it codes here. It is say this blue colored thing is the protein it codes. So it's a protein A. It codes for. Okay. But how to know that this protein is coded by this? Now suppose this protein is responsible. This protein is responsible for the movement of an organism. In this case, suppose it's C. Again, so it it uh, it uh, directly uh, correlated or connected to the movement. Or locomotion, whatever we can say, the movement of the organism. That's the point. Now, what we do, loss of function study means we do something which will block the function of a particular gene or particular a gene of interest. So, in this case, this gene A is a gene of our interest. So, if we block, if we block this gene A to be expressed, okay. So, this process is called simply uh, during from the processing of or producing this protein from the gene involves two steps. One step is called the transcription so that they can make their mRNA or messenger RNA and from the transcription again it is translated this mRNA are translated so here we get mRNA this messenger RNA is getting translated so then we involve translation right and finally get our protein product now what we want to do if we block the expression of gene A so that it cannot produce transcription or we can block it the transcriptional level so that it cannot produce any more protein via translation. So whether we can block it here, we can block it here. Wherever we block this process, it won't produce this protein. So blocking this stage won't produce this protein. As a result, movement will be stopped. So there should be a pause in the movement. So by simply disrupting the function of a particular gene, losing, making the gene lose its function, making the gene or uh, loss is function is telling us that this particular protein or this particular gene is somewhere related to the movement of the organism right once we block this gene we have seen no movement that means this gene is have, having some function in the movement of that organism right so this is the easiest way to find out the function of a gene is to block that gene and see what kind of effect it's uh, providing to the whole system now in this case we haven't found any kind of movement that means it can tell us that the gene A is somewhere correlated with this movement. Okay. So that's the that is called the loss of function study. So you can use this technique to look for the loss of function. Now that's the exact thing what we can study using the SCLEMs because the whole genome is known to us. Now we what we can do we can design such things which can block the region of some gene of our interest. Now what are the things that can block the gene of interest? Now it can be simply blockage of transcription, it can be simple blocking of the replication process and all this. But what we do in this case instead, we block the transcription by simply providing a single standard RNA segment. Now the RNA that we provide is called RNAi or RNA interference. RNAi. So it is called interference. RNA. It's called interference RNA. Now this is a very tricky guy. It's a very nowadays. Uh, it's a hot topic of research. So when you provide this RNA I, so, so let me designate it a different color. So this one is our RNA I. Now once this RNA I is provided, this will go and sit onto some region of the gene. And what it will do? It will block the gene to be expressed. As a result, there will be no protein synthesis. So as there is no protein synthesis, movement will be will not be there. So we are utilizing RNAi as our tool to block the simple stretch. Now how can we design this RNAi so that it can exactly bind with our gene of interest? We know the gene sequence, so what we do, we make a complementary sequence of that particular gene of interest and that thing uh, make sure that this will going, uh, go and bind with the exact region of our interest, right? Now how to deliver this RNAi to the system of C. elegans? So there are different strategies. We can simply deliver it by injecting it, and also, but in this case of C. elegans, it, it, this this C. elegans organism making it much more easier. 
In other organism, if we need to study this RNA interference pattern to look for the loss of function study, we need to inject it, we need to insert it genetically. So it's a tedious job. We need to inject it in germ, uh, germ cells and all this to get it spread throughout the place. But this is not what we need to do in case of C. elegans. Because in case of C. elegans, you simply deliver this RNAi as a food. Yes, they can take, not they can literally actually take RNAi as their food. They can eat RNAi as their food. And once they eat this RNAi, they will be incorporated. How? Because in case of C. elegans, they can eat bacteria, right? So C. elegans can eat bacteria. Now what we can do, we can design some bacteria. Suppose this is a bacteria of our desire. So we design a bacteria, E. coli. Inside the E. coli, we provide those segment of RNAi. But remember, if we provide this segment of RNA in E. coli, it will hamper the activity of E. coli cell. So we cannot give the RNAi as like a simple RNAi uh, solution like that. So instead, what we need to do, we need to provide this RNAi incorporated with the genome of E. coli such a way that it cannot harm E. coli cell. Right? So we provide this RNAi here. It is a incorporated a part of the gene of E. coli system. So it is having this gene. Now once we provide this food as a food to C. elegans, C. elegans eat this uh, type of bacteria, engineered bacteria, having the RNAi. Now once the RNAi reach inside the body or system of C. elegans, this, these things will be cleaved. We also, uh, they are having, the cell of C. elegans are having enzymes to clip these sections. Then the RNAi becomes, the RNAi becomes free. And it can go and sit onto the gene of our interest, which is black in color in this case. And block the activity of gene, so that we get a loss of function. And by looking at the result of loss of function, we can tell that yes, there is something is going on. And this gene is responsible for the activity. For the activity, in this case, for the movement. Okay. So that's the study we can elaborately do using C. elegans. That's why C. elegans are important nowadays utilizing this kind of studies. Okay, so that is uh, all about, uh, not all, it's a uh, very basic thing about the genetics of C. elegans. I hope this video helps you. Thank you.